Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Does the screen look good? Yes, it does look good. All right. Awesome. Uh, well, OK, thanks uh, for the introduction. Yeah, so uh, my name is Matt Billingham. Um, let's see. And today I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about some of the recent work um, that I've been doing uh, with some some my colleagues here at, at, the, uh, at the Space Sciences Lab um, about uh, Aurora on Mars, um, which well, maybe not very many people know about because because it's kind of it's kind of new. Um, anyway, so uh, let's see. To start here, uh, go. Oh, um, so this is a weird picture. Um, I'll explain more what this is at the end, but this is kind of a um, a nice picture and and where we should end up uh, uh, today. Uh, so let's see. I want to start with. Um, uh, more than just Aurora on Mars, but Aurora in general, because some maybe some people aren't aren't familiar with that. Um, and so um, Aurora, or what's sometimes called the Northern Lights, um, is uh, a, a dynamic light display uh, that's usually in you know we can see in the upper atmosphere, uh, usually near the North Pole, um, also near the South Pole, but but fewer people live there, so it's, it's not quite as common. But all these pictures I found. Uh, um, Online of, of just uh, different different photographs people have taken uh, from the ground looking looking at the aurora. Uh, so usually, you know, in uh, Alaska or uh, Canada or even Scandinavia, um, you get lots of these uh, pictures often with snow on the ground, as you can see in some of these. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Uh, and so this is a, a little time lapse uh, movie. Uh, this is greatly sped up. Um, so usually over the course of, of tens tens of minutes, you can see these uh, these colors and these bands dancing around in the sky. Um, and this is one of these one of the the pretty active aurora displays here that that we see um, uh, here on Earth. Um, so kind of fun. Uh, let's see. Um, and so these uh, where these occur uh, are high in the atmosphere, um, usually between 100 to 200 kilometers. Um, so call it, you know, uh, 100 miles on average, plus or minus, you know, uh, uh, you know, 20 or 30 miles. Um, so this is well above where airplanes fly. They're usually about about 10 kilometers on your on your trans transoceanic flights, um, and uh, well below, say, the International Space Station, which is around 400 kilometers uh, or about 250 miles. And so this this little movie is from the space station. So you can see the little little solar panel in the corner that is looking down. Um, on the aurora, you can see all these bright uh, green bands just sort of floating there um, in in the atmosphere. Um, again, greatly, greatly sped up in this case. Uh, so uh, what causes uh, this aurora? Um, and so uh, aurora are caused by uh, particles from space, uh, usually electrons, uh, but sometimes other, other particles, um, and they can hit uh, the atoms and molecules uh, in the atmosphere. Um, and when they hit those uh, atoms and molecules, those, those uh, atoms become excited. They get into excited state. So this is you know, a little bit of quantum mechanics, uh, but you have the, the electrons in the atom and molecule itself will, will uh, you know, um, absorb some energy from the collision. Um, they get a lot excited. Um, and then when these uh, atoms and molecules relax or calm down, uh, they release that energy. They release that energy um, from light, and so these these uh, gases in the upper atmosphere will emit light. And it's uh, basically very similar to how a neon light works. Um, and so you have a basically a glass tube filled with gas, and you bombard it with with electrons. So you run a current through it, and then the gas starts to glow. You go with nice neon lights. And if any of you remember um, the old uh, CRT. Uh, TV screens or monitors—they they actually work on the same uh, the same sort of uh, uh, principle too. Where you shoot electrons from the back of the TV at the at the back of the screen, and the screen starts to glow. You can watch the the moving pictures and all that. Uh, very similar to how how it works. Um, not like our our present day flat screens that uses different technology. Um, okay, and so um, and a lot of the pictures I just showed and little animations we saw a lot of green light. Uh, coming from our atmosphere, is that pred predominantly comes from oxygen. Um, so in our atmosphere, at least down here on the surface, 
uh, arm is mostly nitrogen, uh, but also has a lot of oxygen in it. So oxygen is uh, the stuff we breathe. As you go higher up in the atmosphere, um, you get more and more you know, relative fraction, more oxygen. And so these electrons from space um, are, are uh, hitting whatever's up there. So they hit a lot of, a lot of oxygen. And um, you excite oxygen. One of the colors it emits is, is green. Sometimes it emits some red, uh, red colors too. Uh, but predominantly green, and so we see this nice green um, aurora here on on Earth. Okay, um, there's there's some other important stuff uh, uh, that that comes into how the aurora is formed, and that has to do with um, the magnetic field. And so, electrons from space, actually all charged particles, um, are guided by uh, magnetic fields. So and this is um, more physics stuff, uh, but charged particles are basically uh, the magnetic field tells a charged particle which way to go. And so um, Earth's magnetic field uh, looks like it has a giant bar magnet in the middle. Um, it doesn't really. So actually what's going on is you have um, motions in the liquid iron core swirling around that generates Earth's magnetic field. Uh, but the shape of that magnetic field uh, looks just like a big bar magnet. Um, where all of the magnetic field points out of one hemisphere and into another. And so here near the North and South Poles, uh, it's, it's almost vertical um, into the atmosphere. And so the, the magnetic field guides these charged particles into the atmosphere. Uh, and, and that um, is why we see the, the aurora here near the poles, because uh, that's where the magnetic field lines are mostly vertical and, and guiding those, those charged particles right down and to hit the atmosphere, excite those atmospheric uh, atoms, molecules, and then they emit light. And so usually we see these rings um, of aurora around the North and South Pole. Uh, okay, so this is um, from a satellite, orbits the Earth, looking down on the Earth. Um, and maybe you can see here, this is Antarctica. Um, and so this is the Southern Lights. So we have a, the Northern Lights ring around the North and also the Southern Lights around the South. And again, this is over many hours, so it's greatly sped up. Um, you can see how the uh, the aurora is kind of dancing and moving around, and changing shape and brightness. Uh, let's see. Um, and so, often from space, when we look at the aurora, we don't we don't look in um, visible light, light light our eyes can see. Uh, we'll often look in in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. So our eyes can't see ultraviolet. Uh, ultraviolet has, has wavelengths that are shorter than, than violet. Um, uh, so we can't see it. We can build instruments, build cameras, put them on satellites so they can, uh, so they can see in ultraviolet. Um, and ultraviolet is useful because there's actually a lot of information we can get uh, from looking at the, at the ultraviolet light. There's also a lot of information we can get from visible light. Um, but from space, uh, actually, it's it's easier to see uh, the aurora in ultraviolet than invisible because you know, there's lots of uh, you know the atmosphere re reflects a lot of visible light, uh, but does not reflect a lot of uh, ultraviolet light. So when we look at aurora from the ground, usually we study it, study it in visible light. Look at it from space, we study it in ultraviolet light. We can't study the aurora from the ground in ultraviolet light uh, because the atmosphere. Uh, does a pretty good job of absorbing ultraviolet. Uh, and so you wouldn't see very much from the ground if you tried to use an ultraviolet camera, but from space you can, you can see a lot. Um, and so since it's ultraviolet light, our eyes can't see it. Sometimes we get crazy pictures like this where the color has nothing to do with the color of light uh, being emitted. This is all ultraviolet. We can't, we can't see it. We can't, our eyes don't know it is there, so we can't assign a color to it. So here, these colors just represent how bright it is. So red is, is really bright, and these sort of greenish and bluish colors are not quite as bright. Uh, but again, it just illustrates there's this ring uh, around the North Pole, so you can see Greenland, Northern Canada, this ring of aurora um, around the, the North and the South Pole. We saw before. OK, so this is Earth, turns out. Uh, other planets, like Jupiter, um, have a similar magnetic field uh, configuration, a dipole magnetic field, where you have a bunch of magnetic field uh, going into one hemisphere, one out of one hemisphere, so near the poles, 
uh, the magnetic field is, is uh, more or less vertical. And we see similar uh, rings around the poles. And so here is Jupiter in visible light. So this is what we you know, would see with a telescope. Uh, but but up at the top, we have the uh, Jupiter's aurora in ultraviolet light. So you can see how bright Jupiter is here in visible light. If we try to take a, a visible picture of the aurora, well, all we'd see is, is sunlight reflected off Jupiter's clouds. But looking ultraviolet, um, Jupiter's clouds are very dark, but the aurora is very bright. So we can we can then see uh, Jupiter's aurora in ultraviolet. And here's just a close-up view. Uh, um, it's much uh, more structured and complicated really, more than Earth's because there's a lot of stuff going on at Jupiter in terms of its big moons and all sorts of all sorts of interesting stuff happening there. But that's a whole different talk uh, about Jupiter's aurora. Uh, let's see. Similarly, we can look at Saturn. It also has a, a dipole magnetic field like the Earth does. And so here is Saturn in visible light, and then Saturn's aurora is just happening to be from the South Pole um, in ultraviolet light. Again, because again, if you try to look at this in, in visible light, Saturn's cloud tops are too bright. Can't really see the, uh, uh, the aurora, but in ultraviolet light, Saturn's clouds are dim, and we can see uh, this bright um, uh, emission from these, this ring around Saturn's pole. And let's see. I have one more. So here's just a, again a time lapse. So you know several pictures. I think these are from um, Hubble Space Telescope. Um, you know, watching this pattern over the course of several hours and seeing how the uh, the aurora changes, just like we saw on Earth in the in the earlier uh, time lapse movie. You can see the aurora you know, basically change a little bit in in size and shape. It gets gets brighter and dimmer and all the stuff. Um, okay, but this is not a talk about aurora on Earth or Jupiter or Saturn. It's supposed to be aurora on Mars. So what about Mars? Uh, so interestingly, Mars does not have a dipole magnetic field. Uh, what it does have are these small regions um, of magnetized rocks. And so this is just an artist's rendition um, of what Mars's magnetic field might look like um and so this this i mean this in itself is really interesting um this suggests that maybe early in its history mars had a had a a, a dipole field kind of like the earth does uh but it doesn't anymore it it went away uh basically the whatever was going on in the liquid outer core of mars that may have generated a dipole field uh stopped happening and then Mars's dipole field went away, dissipated. And what's left over are these, these regions um, on, on Mars' surface where the rocks remember uh, what that magnetic field was. So they have these little, little patches of magnetic field rather than a, than a global dipole magnetic field like Earth and Jupiter and Saturn. It, it looks much different at Mars. And so here's actually some um, uh, uh, data. So not an artist's condition. Uh, but there's a map of where the magnetic field is is nearly vertical at Mars. This is the vertical part of the magnetic field. Um, and let's see, it's looking at different hemispheres of Mars. And if we made a map like this at Earth, I should have put one for just for comparison. Um, it'd be much less structured. You would see maybe a, a band of blue at the top and a band of red at the bottom. And just, you know, some of these sort of yellowish, grayish, greenish colors in the, in the middle. Uh, I'm going to try and jump back some pictures here to show you this one. And so you can see in the, in the north, there's vertical magnetic fields and the south, vertical magnetic fields. But everywhere else, there's no vertical fields. They're, they're basically horizontal to the surface. And so if we were to make a map like this for Earth, it would just be you know, these bands uh, in latitude, not all these splotches like we see here at Mars. Um, okay, so uh, with this in mind, we can ask ourselves, well, then what does the aurora look like at Mars? Uh, well, I would tell you, but that would be too short. So I wanted to give you a little bit of history first on how we discovered uh, aurora at Mars and how we got to where we are today. Um, okay, so a uh, little bit of history. Uh, so actually, um, 
Aurora on Mars was first discovered in 2005. So almost 20 years ago, about 18 years ago, it was first discovered um, by this instrument with a, with a crazy acronym, uh, Spectroscopy for the Investigations and Characteristics of the Atmosphere of Mars. We just call it SPICAM. That's much shorter. Um, and this was uh, an uh, instrument, an ultraviolet instrument, uh, that was uh, orbiting Mars on a spacecraft called Mars Express. And so Mars Express uh, was a mission uh, that was launched by the European Space Agency. And it's still orbiting Mars, uh, still taking data. Uh, and this is just one of the instruments that was on, on that uh, satellite around Mars. Uh, and here is the first picture of the Aurora on Mars. Uh, actually, it's not really a picture. It's not, it's not very pretty, and it's kind of hard to interpret really what it is. Um, and so this is actually uh, a, a, what we call a spectrum, not really a picture. So in this, this instrument, uh, the spike thing we call spike cam, um, it, it diffracts light, uh, kind of like a prism. So the light comes in, uh, and then it's spread out in wavelength. Like if you, if you shine light on a prism, it's going to make a rainbow. Um, so basically light gets, gets spread out from, from red to blue. Uh, this is ultraviolet light, so light is spread out, but again, you can't see it. Uh, but it does get spread out in wavelength. And so that's what the, the bottom here is wavelength from 100 to 350 nanometers. The, 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 the wavelength of the light. The human eye um, is sensitive uh, to light from about 400 to 700 nanometers. So blue light is around 400 nanometers. Red light is around 700 nanometers. So this is all at wavelength shorter than our eye can see. So I wouldn't see any of this. So this is all in the ultraviolet. Um, so, uh, the spectrum, so it's not quite as pretty, it's not a nice picture, but there's a lot of information in here. Okay, so what we're, what are we looking at here? So this is a color bar where, um, the brown stuff means it's, it's very dim, there's not much light coming. And as your colors go from yellow to green to blue, it gets brighter. And we see these, these, sort of these vertical stripes here. So that means there's light coming at very particular wavelengths. So not, not all the colors in the rainbow plus ultraviolet, but just very particular uh, wavelengths of light are being emitted. Um, which is what happens when you have aurora. You excite your, your atoms molecules, they'll emit light, but they only emit very specific wavelengths. Uh, but what's interesting here is this little band, horizontal band right here, where, okay, on this side, things are pretty dark, lots of brown color, that means very dark. Here's a big a blip of blue right here, and then becomes, you know, brown again, except for these vertical strips. And so this little blip right here, this is the first detection of aurora on Mars, which again, isn't very pretty. I'll, I'll give you that. But there's lots of, lots of information in here. So if we take a, a, a cut in this picture this way, right where that blip is, and look at the spectrum. So basically look at how bright it is versus wavelength. And so here is the same, uh, the same wavelength scale from you know just over hundred to uh, you know about three hundred nanometers. So this is the same wavelength scale we have over here, uh, but now instead of looking at you know uh, uh, finding colors, different brightnesses, we just look at the uh, brightness then on on this side. And so these little a bunch of spiky things is usually what a spectrum looks like, but the the bigger spikes that's where there's more light. Uh, uh, coming at those wavelengths, and more lights being emitted. Um, and so we're able, if we look at a spectrum like this, one of the neat things about um, looking at spectra or, or, or is you can figure out um, what atoms and molecules um, are emitting light. And also, you can do some other neat stuff and figure out, you know, what's the energy of electrons that hit them. Uh, that'll tell you how how bright. Uh, but what I wanted to point out here is that we see um, light emitted from carbon monoxide. That, that's CO. Uh, that's not something that we have in Earth's atmosphere. So Earth's atmosphere, primarily nitrogen and oxygen. The atmosphere of Mars is primarily carbon dioxide. Um, it's almost 95% carbon dioxide on the surface. As you go higher in the atmosphere, uh, sometimes that carbon dioxide breaks up. So you have carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, 
and also oxygen. Um, and so we're seeing uh, here in the spectrum a uh, light coming from the carbon monoxide molecule and also uh, from the carbon dioxide. So the, the, the brightest light here is coming from, from these wavelengths here that are carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. And these are things we've never seen at Earth uh, because we don't have that much uh, carbon dioxide and, and carbon monoxide, at least not enough to, to, uh, to um, uh, emit light uh, in any, any appreciable amount. Um, so this was the first discovery. Again, not not pretty, uh, but there it is. Um, and this means you know something that people that, that, that study spectra all the time. But it, a picture like this really doesn't capture the the public's imagination, does it? Um, okay. So um, later, um, about uh, almost ten years ago, um, another uh, mission to Mars uh, called Maven um, had an instrument called the Imaging ultraviolet spectrograph, or we call IUVS. Uh, so it was a similar instrument to SpyCam. It looked at, at uh, ultraviolet light, and again, as the light entered the instrument, it was it was broken up by wavelengths, um, like a little prism, um, and so you could look at the spectrum. Uh, but in this case, uh, as uh, um, you know, the the spacecraft, uh, well, is there's uh, the instrument itself. Could, could move and basically scan across Mars rather than just stare at one spot. And so IUVS was able to, to build up images. And so here is basically the, I think the first um, image of what Aurora on Mars looks like. And so basically what happens is this instrument would stare at Mars and it would have a mirror that would tilt back and forth and it would scan. And so these little these little rectangles here are strips um, as the instrument would scan across Mars. And you can see that uh, oh, there's some little little places here where it's brighter uh, than the surrounding area. And again, this is ultraviolet light, so we just pick the color. Our eyes can't see this. But I guess whoever made this picked a color purple and said, okay, let's look at it. Let's, let's uh, uh, call it purple and see what it looks like. Um, okay, and so this... Uh, it was really interesting. So this is kind of cool, and you see these little these little bright squiggles here. Um, you can line that up with a magnetic field map of Mars, and you can see that these these squiggles will trace out uh, the places of the magnetic field vertical. Um, and this was the best, and I think the only picture we had uh, up until uh, 2021, just a couple of years ago. So that brings us to um, another mission. So uh, basically, in, in 2021, uh, the Emirates Mars mission, um, sometimes we abbreviate it as, as EMM, it's also called HOPE, or AMAL in, in Arabic, it began orbiting Mars. Um, and this was a mission uh, um, launched by the United Arab Emirates. Um, and it had a, another ultraviolet instrument on it um, that we call the, the Emirates Mars Ultraviolet Spectrometer, so often we just call it EMUs. Um, but it, again, it measured the spectrum of Mars, uh, but it had a much larger um, field of view, and you could scan across the planet and make uh, images. Uh, similar to this one, but as you'll see, um, much better in my opinion. Um, okay, so these are uh, the first you know, global images um, of Aurora at Mars that were taken by this, this ultraviolet instrument uh, from the Emirates Mars mission. And so what are we looking at here? Uh, so on the left side of each one of these, this big bright crescent, uh, that's basically the, the atmosphere of Mars that's being illuminated by the sun. The sun's off to the left, sunlight shining on the atmosphere, and that scatters and, and reflects a bunch of sunlight. It was really bright. And when in a lot of these, we have all these dots that are surrounding Mars here. Those are actually stars um, that we can see. Uh, but here on the right side, of all these images um, where it's darker. Uh, this is the night side of Mars, where we wouldn't expect any scattered sunlight. And so all of the, um, the light coming from this, this dark side of Mars is aurora. So now we're looking at um, aurora on Mars. Uh, and these pictures are, are much better than the previous pictures because this instrument is much more uh, sensitive than the previous instruments. So every time you send a new 
instrument on a new satellite out into space, you want to make it better than the last one. Whenever you make something better, uh, more sensitive, you can you can see more stuff. And so um, with this with this uh, instrument with Emus, um, we we see aurora uh, on Mars all over the place. Okay, so this aurora that we see often, almost always, not quite always, uh, will often line up where um, in places where the magnet magnetic field at Mars is is vertical or, or nearly so. Um, and so in this case right here in this uh, rightmost image, you see these, these sort of squiggles. Uh, they will line up um, with these regions here where the magnetic field of Mars is, is, is strong and, and vertical. Um, and I'll show some pictures later that, that have some, some contours. What's also really interesting, I think, is you know, we see um, also uh, auroral emission where the magnetic field is not vertical, where things don't line up with vertical magnetic fields. And so that um, is really interesting because that's completely unexpected. Uh, at least I thought it was completely unexpected. And so when we find things we don't expect, you know, that's when we, when we learn something new. We're going to try and figure out, well, why, why, why is this happening? <laughs> uh, okay. And it turns out, um, again, this this uh, instrument on the on the Emirates Mars mission is much more sensitive than previous instruments. And so, uh, basically, we see um, aurora almost all the time whenever we're looking at the at the night side of the planet. So, we have the spacecraft that orbits Mars, uh, whenever it looks at the night side, almost always we'll see uh, we'll see some some aurora. Uh, okay, so most of the time, again. Uh, it's associated with these, uh, where the the magnetic field is is nearly vertical, and so that's you know, basically the some example images uh, here at the top. I don't know if you can see the um, there's some contours here, blue and purple. That's just showing the regions of strongest magnetic field. And another picture that that might be easier to see. Uh, but we have the what we call the crustal field aurora. So that's where the where the aurora lines up with the vertical magnetic fields. We see lots of examples of that. And again, interestingly, um, we see sometimes we'll see aurora that's not where the vertical magnetic field is. Um, it's just called the patchy aurora. It, it just occurs away from the crustal magnetic fields, uh, the vertical magnetic fields, which again is really interesting. Not really sure why that is. And then even crazier is sometimes we'll see um, these these bands or these lines for aurora. Uh, that will cover basically an entire hemisphere. Um, so that's what was shown in this bottom row, what we call sinuous aurora. So when going from uh, you know, from uh, north to south or from east to west, sometimes there's little squiggles in here. Uh, and and this has no analogy to anything we've seen at Earth or at Jupiter or at Saturn. And so it's a you know, completely uh, different, completely new uh, a type of aurora that that you know we've we've never seen before at, at other planets. Um, so that's really interesting, um, and we want to we want to figure out well why is this happening? Um, we don't know yet. Short answer, but that's one of the uh, things that, that a lot uh, people are working on. Okay, so another thing we can do is now we have um, over two years of data. Uh, of images from the Emirates Mars mission, and we can look at them statistically. Okay, so just take all those images and pile them up on a on a map of Mars. So you have latitude versus longitude on these two maps, and this is just showing you know um, where is aurora on Mars most likely. So we have an, an occurrence rate. What percent of the time do we see uh, um, aurora in these different locations? Um, let's see. So a couple of things I want to point out. Um, first off, uh, uh, the aurora at Mars is, is very dim compared to Earth. And so we can see on, on this, uh, on, the, on both of these, we have a, like a, a 3R and a 7R. Those are the brightness thresholds. So R um, stands for Rayleigh's, and that's a unit of brightness. Uh, that's often used when you look at at atmospheres. So a nice, you know, uh, dark adjusted human eye 
Uh, can see a few hundred gray leaves. That's pretty dim. Um, a nice auroral display, at least I see on Earth. Like those first few images I showed of those nice bright green aurora. Uh, those are, you know, usually several to many thousand uh, Rayleigh's. And so here we're looking at thresholds of three, not several thousand, um, and thresholds of seven Rayleigh's, not several thousand. This is very, very dim uh, compared to what we see on Earth. Um, on average, okay, there are uh, certain places where we can see bright aurora on Mars, so several hundred uh, uh, Rayleigh's, but, but uh, on average, it's the, the aurora on Mars appears to be pretty dim. Uh, let's see. Another thing I want to point out. Oh, uh, so where uh, the brighter aurora are most common are in these regions of vertical magnetic field. So here, I think the, the contours are much clearer. So you can see this sort of blue and green contours. Uh, these are regions where the magnetic field is, is almost vertical. And where the, the magnetic field is vertical, that's where we see these, these bright patches saying, okay, this brighter aurora occur here. Uh, more often, so all these all these little patches here, where you see the bright spots of your brighter you know, your brighter threshold aurora here, um, is almost always uh, 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 where the field's vertical. Uh, but we look up here at the dimmer aurora, you can see it's widespread, uh, basically across the whole planet. Um, there's there's almost always uh, aurora somewhere, even in places uh, where the magnetic field is not uh, not vertical. Uh, okay, and one other thing I want to point out uh, is um, this instrument um, doesn't, uh, it looks in a different wavelength range. So again, we're looking at spectrum here in, in the ultraviolet, uh, but you got to pick, you know, basically when you make an instrument, what, what wavelengths to look at. And so this particular instrument doesn't see those carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide emissions like the previous instruments did. Uh, like I showed you that spectrum from, from spy camps, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Uh, what this instrument sees is um, from oxygen. And so here we have, this happens to be at 130 nanometers, uh, but this is a, a, an emission that comes from an excited oxygen atom. So again, electron hits an oxygen, uh, that atom becomes excited, and when it uh, relaxes, calms down again, it'll emit, sometimes it will emit and ultraviolet uh, light at 100, 130 nanometers. And so um, that's similar to what we see on Earth. If we look at e, an Earth's aurora in ultraviolet, we'll, we'll see this emission from, from oxygen um, at 130 uh, nanometers. Um, OK, so um, I just wanted to summarize some stuff uh, and compare and contrast with what we see at Mars what we see at Earth. Okay, so in general, you know, aurora occur or particles from space hit the atmosphere. Those atmospheric atoms and molecules get excited, and then when they relax, they, they emit light, and that's the light we can see. And usually, almost always, but not quite always, uh, aurora occur where, mag where the magnetic field is vertical, because the magnetic field is basically guiding those charged particles toward the atmosphere, and that's most easily done when the field is, is nearly vertical with respect to the atmosphere. Um, and that's what we see at Earth and at Jupiter and at Saturn, and sometimes at Mars. But at Mars in particular, um, let's see, the aurora uh, um, is, is patchy. Like its magnetic field, it's patchy. Uh, and so that is very much unlike Earth. So at Earth, you usually had this nice continuous ring uh, around the pole um, due to that large scale, you know, homogeneous magnetic field. Um, let's see, Mars, not like that. Very, very patchy. You can see patches of, of, of aurora here and there. Um, let's see, but the brightest aurora at Mars uh, most often occurs where the field is, is vertical or nearly vertical. That is very similar to Earth. Um, however, uh, there's that widespread uh, dimmer uh, where the where the magnetic field is not vertical. So again, that's not something we see at Earth. We see the aurora where the field's vertical, and no aurora 
usually where the, where the field is on. Uh, let's see. Another similarity is we see um, aurora from oxygen. So that's, that's um, um, let's see here, from, uh, from this picture. This is all coming from oxygen. And so we can see that, and that's very similar to Earth, because most of the light that we see from Earth's aurora uh, is, is coming from oxygen. However, we also see uh, aurora coming from carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. And those are gases that aren't, aren't as plentiful um, in Earth's atmosphere. So we don't see any aurora uh, coming from, from those molecules at Earth, um, only from Mars. Um, and so th there's some similarities with Earth. And that there's some really important differences uh, fr from Earth's aurora that we see at Mars too. Okay, and I do want to say that um, all the observations that I that I showed at least from Mars are from the ultraviolet. Um, but as we know from from studying you know gases in, in Earth laboratories, uh, oxygen uh, when you excite oxygen, it will emit ultraviolet light, but it will also emit visible light. Uh, same thing with carbon dioxide. Uh, but you have it in the laboratory, bombard it with, with uh, electrons that will emit uh, ultraviolet light, but will also emit visible light. And um, carbon dioxide will often emit um, a blue color. Um, and so you'll get to green colors uh, from oxygen, but blue colors from carbon dioxide. And so the fact that we see um, these emissions in ultraviolet coming from these gases says, well, at the same time, these gases are probably also emitting visible light, just our instruments uh, can't see them. Um, so the conjecture here is that, is that probably, occasionally, uh, the aurora might be bright enough to be seen from the surface um, in visible light. And so I wanted to show this, this map again. This is from the this picture again. So this is from, from the title slide. But basically showing uh, um, just that one, one individual image, uh, looking at the, the aurora on Mars. And again, these brighter, uh, brighter little features, brightest features here trace out the vertical magnetic field, magnetic field here. Uh, but this is where we see the brightest aurora. Um, and so uh, the thought is that maybe someday if we get um, uh, rovers in this area. So right now, the, there's no been no rovers to th at this area where the vertical magnetic fields are. Or someday we get people to this area, uh, they could be able to look up and perhaps uh, see some aurora in the sky. And um, I picked this particular picture because it had a lot of green that'd be from oxygen, uh, but also some blue mixed in here, uh, which on Earth comes from nitrogen, but on Mars we come from the uh, the carbon dioxide. And so this is, um, I don't know, ho hopefully a picture that that uh, someone might, might see someday um, of aurora on Mars, but taken from the, from the surface of the planet, um, invisible light that our eyes can see uh, rather than this uh, ultraviolet light from, uh, uh, from space. And that's just much more, um, I don't know, uh, visually engaging, you know, to actually see uh, um, with our own eyes um, aurora on Mars. Um, and so I think that's all that I, uh, all the all the uh, the big stuff I wanted I wanted to say, um, and so I, I put a splash my my email address up here um, in case you have any any lingering questions. But I think I'm I'm happy to take take questions now. Also, yes, Matt, we have a couple of question um, question from uh, Valerie. Uh, she said, when you say dim, does that mean dim to the UV sensors only? How might that relate to visual spectrum? So, uh, good question. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, with, you know, as far as what we see, I call it dim, because that's, that's dim in, in, in our instrument, in our ultraviolet instrument. Um, right. And so people um, study, you know, basically, um, you know, you have a gas, you bombard it with electrons, and you see, okay, how much light is emitted in ultraviolet versus how much light is emitted in invisible. And look at, you know, look at the entire spectrum from, from ultraviolet to visible, even what we can see. And so that, um, it, it depends a lot on the energy of the electrons that come in, um, you know, basically what excited states uh, your atoms and molecules get excited to and what, what emissions come uh, um, out of that. 
uh, but there's been some theoretical work uh, 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 done done recently to say, okay, if we see this much, you know, brightness in ultraviolet, what does that correspond to in terms of visible light? And uh, you know, people have have suggested, like like I kind of suggest here, that that the brightest aurora should be visible um, in visible light. So we should be able to see it, uh, like say with a, with an instrument like the human eye, um, uh, should be able, uh, in in some cases, to to see that kind of like, uh, uh, let's see, get up here, yeah, kind of, like, you know, this is this is an Earth image, but maybe someday um, we'll see some some glow like that, um, in visible light. But yeah, we can we can do that calculation, and figure out how bright it would be invisible, and it should be, uh, you know, just above the threshold of what of what uh, humans can see. Thank you, Matt. A question from Claire. What theories have been put out for the aur aurora areas that don't line up with vertical magnetic fields? Oh, boy, that's a good question. Uh, well, OK. Uh, so I guess the the uh, the ideas that we have is that the uh, um, <clears throat> So basically, these maps of the magnetic fields uh, that that we try to show here, oh, like like the, this, these contours here that show the the vertical magnetic field. So this is a magnetic field that only comes from from Mars itself, from the crust, from the rocks inside Mars. Um, and so these are regions where you would expect the the vertical magnetic field to be. Uh, so there's also uh, a magnetic field that comes from the sun. So the so the basically the the Mar, all the planets are exposed to basically what we call a solar wind. So it's it's the particles come from the sun, and the sun's magnetic field is dragged along with it. We call it the interplanetary magnetic field. And so that basically um, you know permeates the solar system. Um, okay, why why am I saying that? Um, and so what can happen is you can have this interplanetary magnetic field interact with the the field, the, the magnetic field from, from the crust of Mars. Um, and so what we think is happening is that, okay, there are actually vertical fields there, but they're not coming from Mars itself. They're coming from the interplanetary magnetic field. And as that, you know, basically um, wraps around Mars and interacts with the, with the um, uh, Mars's crustal magnetic fields, you can get places where it's locally locally vertical, at least into the atmosphere. And so you can guide guide particles in that way. Um, and so it's it's a what we call an external magnetic field um, that can guide the particles into the atmosphere rather than a magnetic field coming from inside Mars. And I think that's our best guess, because we shouldn't be able to get particles to the atmosphere. Electrons shouldn't hit the atmosphere if there's no no way to get there. And so we think there there's there's gotta be some sort of vertical magnetic field, or, or at least almost vertical magnetic field that lets the particles um, hit, the, hit the upper atmosphere. So that, that's our idea at the moment, but we're still studying this stuff, trying to figure out why, why we do see uh, uh, aurora in these places where we don't, wouldn't expect to. Thank you, Matt. Another question from Valerie. If the aurora move, what would cause them to move? Oh, golly, that is um, a really good question. <laughs> um, so okay, so aurora, we we see aurora uh, you know even at at Earth and at Jupiter and at Saturn and even at Mars we have seen that. So we can take pictures a few minutes apart and we'll see that the the, the bright areas move a little bit. And so it either comes from either the 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 source of the charged particles, the source of electrons is moving, and so you know had some. Some source of electrons over here, and, and now that source has moved somewhere else, and so they are guided into the atmosphere. They hit a different part of the atmosphere, um, or so that's one option. Or you can have um, the the magnetic field move or, or wave around a little bit, um, and so we think the magnetic field is, is you know basically fixed, just not really fixed. Um, the the magnetic field can move around a little bit, especially. When you had these interactions with the interplanetary magnetic field, um, and so as the interplanetary magnetic field uh, interacts with the uh, crustal field from Mars, um, 
you can basically move around that crustal field a little bit. Well, it doesn't move in the rock. They can move up in the upper atmosphere. So I should clarify that. Um, and so it, we, we, as we see the aurora moving, that's telling us one of two things, either the source of the particles hitting the atmosphere is moving, um, or uh, the field itself is moving, or both. Um, it's hard to distinguish between the two. Um, at places like um, Earth and Jupiter and Saturn, okay, here, there you have a very strong magnetic field. And it's, it's basically too strong to move around much. And so there we think the source of where the electrons are coming from is moving around in space. Um, at Mars, we can't say that for sure because the field's a lot weaker um, and is able to be pushed around more uh, by the interplanetary magnetic field. So it's either the, the source of particles is moving, uh, the magnetic field itself is moving around, or, or both is happening. And that can cause the, the aurora to move. Thank you, Matt. And question for from Mitra. Um, they ask, how do solar magnetic fields and solar winds affect the aurora in Mars? So that is an excellent question. Uh, that is what we're looking at. You know, there's there, there's people across the hall from me and a few doors down from me that are looking at that exact thing. <laughs> They're trying to figure out, um, you know, how do changes in the solar wind? How does that change uh, the, the aurora we see? Uh, Let's see. And, and so what do we know so far? Um, so there does seem to be uh, um, so some, uh, some change in the aurora. So we have the, you know, basically the, the solar wind um, can, can sometimes be fast or slow. And, as, and it seems like when the, when the solar wind is you know, basically faster or, or more dense, um, it, the, the, uh, the occurrence rate of the aurora on Mars goes up. Um, sim similarly with the, um, the solar magnetic field, the interplanetary magnetic field, certain regions uh, on Mars, uh, let's see, um, are more likely to be, have aurora there um, or not, depending upon the direction um, that that uh, interplanetary magnetic field points. Um, and so I don't have any good pictures, but, but I have seen... Um, uh, some other pictures showing, you know, if you have the, the interplanetary magnetic field point one way, we can make a map like this uh, of where the aurora are. And if the magnetic field points another way, we can make a map like this of where the magnetic, or where the aurora are. And there are differences. So that's telling us, we, we don't know exactly what's going on yet, but we do know that the direction of the solar magnetic field uh, does affect when and where um, Aurora can occur on Mars, but that's basically you know the the the, the cutting edge of research right now, um, at least for aurora on Mars is, is how does how does the sun how does the the magnetic field from the sun and the solar wind from the sun how does that affect when and where um, and how bright and how often you know we see this aurora on Mars. So so hopefully um, you know in a couple of years the next talk will be we'll have a lot more a lot more um, information and answers uh, to that question. But that's a that's what we're all wondering. Thank you, Matt. That's the last question in chat. Um, but um, Emery and Claire said thank you for sharing this interesting information. And Dr. Frederick is so intriguing and just fascinated with Mars. Um, so I'm very you... happy to share that. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Matt. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time um, to share with us the causes of aurora and why they appear and act so differently on Mars. I also want to thank everyone for joining the program. I hope you all find the presentation interesting to you. I will send out an evaluation survey together with Matt's presentation slide deck and a link to today's recording. Uh, please uh, give us your feedback so we can continue to improve our programming. Again, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye now. Thanks.